Hello, I'm Steve Lipton, and this is a series of advanced topics to extend my LinkedIn learning course, SAP Business One Reporting and Customization. We're trying to make a printed version of this production report to include the routings on them. This video requires some knowledge of Crystal Reports. So if you're rusty on Crystal Reports, you might want to check out my course, SAP Business One Reporting and Customization in the LinkedIn Learning Library. Now, in the last video, we figured out the logic in SQL. We'll next make the production order in Crystal Reports to make a production order that handles routing. I'm going to start with this simple production order header. You can download this from the exercise files on GitHub or make your own. The important thing here, though, is if you do take it, make sure that you go to the set data source location and change your data source since you probably will not be able to use the one that I saved it as. I am going to go over here in a database expert real quick, and let's look at the links. And you can see that I use the OWOR, the header report, and the OITM for the item master. I have those linked together by item code so that I can get the name of the item. I've got that set up ahead of time. I can hit OK here. I've already put in a doc key here. I'm OK to do with my forms. And I made one formula field for the status up here. Everything else is just laying out data. What I want to do now is play with these details. And I'm going to use two details. I'm actually going to go in here, go to Section Expert, and make a second one so that I have two details. I'm going to put the one without routing in A and the one with routing in B. So I'm going to make two separate reports. That way they don't have any problems with all the link issues that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. There we go. We got that all taken care of. Um, I could put a page header here. I'm not going to, so I'm going to suppress this so I don't have extra space in here. So I'm going to hit suppress. Now that disappears and won't show up on my report. And give myself a little space here. What I'm going to stick in this detail A and B is a sub-report. And you'll find sub-reports right here on the toolbar under Insert Sub-Report. I'm going to click that. Now I'm going to make my first one. It's going to be called Sub No Routing. When you make the name, you're going to go back into the report wizard as you've probably used many times before. And I can go into my report wizard and go to my tables. And I'm going to use two tables for this report. The first one is WR1. And I can add that. And the other one I'm going to need is OITM. And I'll add that. I can go to next. I check my links and my links are fine. It's item code, item code. So that's fine. And I can go to next. The rest of this we're not going to worry about. So I'm going to go to finish. And now I've got a sub report made. I now have to go to the link. And so I'm going to use the doc entry, which is a classic one to use for this. Now, the problem with doc entry here is that there are a lot of things called doc entry. So make sure you go back into here and find what it is. You see this one says internal number. That's because it's part of OITM. It's actually part of this. I don't want that one. I want the other one. I want WOR1. So I'm going to scroll down this list here until I find it. There it is. So that I make sure I have the right one. And I can hit OK now that I've now set a link and a sub-report. It'll set up all of my selection criteria for me. I get a nice little box here. I'm going to stick that box right here. Extend it out all the way as I can. So this will be the size of my editing report. Well, once I have this done, I can double click in it and go into a sub report that I can now add stuff in. So I'm going to go ahead here. And I'm going to get rid of this print date because I don't need it. The only thing I'm going to be interested here is details and the report header on top. So report header A, I'm going to suppress that. Report footers, I'm not going to use at all. And we're only going to do a report header B in details. And then I can start adding information in here. So let's start with WOR1. Let's do line number and the details. 
and that doesn't need to be that big. And then I'll put in item code. All the way on the bottom here is plan quantity, and that's all I'm going to do for this one, which I'll stick over here. Now, that's a big field, so you'll have to scoot it over a bit. Okay, and so I got my plan quantity. And then inside here, I want my description, which is item name. And I'll make that big. Okay. And with that, I can now go back here to preview. And look what's happened. I've gotten the report has shown those pieces of information here. It's my line number, my item code, and my item name with the quantity plant. So we've got everything necessary right here on the production report. And so this is the basic report. Now this is for 155. I could do the same thing here for 156. Let's take a look at that one. Check that. You can see it's working fine. I mean, it's the same report, just a different work order. But, uh, so we got that all working. That's good. Now let's do one more of those. I'm going to go back here to design. And I'm going to do the same thing all over again with one change. First thing we're going to do is do sub routing for the name. And I'll hit report wizard. And I can go into some tables here. Again, I'm going to need WR1, WOR4, and OITM. And then hit Next, and we can see how these all work out. OITM has one link. Item code, item code, that's good. And let's scoot this WOR4 over, and there's two here. You can see the stage ID, like we've already talked about, and the doc entry. This is why I like to do them in, in SQL, is that I make sure that these links are set up properly when I get here so that I don't have run into issues later on. And I know that these links are not going to be my bugs in my application. So now I can go ahead and hit Next, and the rest of this I don't worry about, so I'm going to go hit Finish. And I am now ready for my link, so I go here. Again, we're going to use doc entry, and I'll put that over here. And once again, I got the wrong doc entry. So I'm going to go down here and find the right doc entry. And hit OK. I can put that one into details B. Make it the same size. Once I do that, I can double click into it and start putting in my details here. Again, do some suppressions. Save myself some space. And then just start putting details in here. On this one, I'm going to do a little bit different because I'm going to start with the stage ID. And then I want a item code. And I'm going to want my planned quantity again. And then in between those two, I'll stick the description. In item name stretch that out a little bit okay so I've got, I've got this report figured out I can go back into my preview and we'll see I've got the second report which is all set now too it's a little different we can of course clean this up but I'm not too worried about that it's just getting the functionality of this working now I've got my next stage I still don't have my routing names on here but I'm going to go back into here and go back into the sub routing and do one more step and that's I'm going to go over here to report and go to group expert now my stage ids are a great way to group things together because those tell me which stage which routing we have so i just changed this to group by stage id hit ok and i got a group stage id and now i'm going to go back up here you can go to w04 and take the name from that 
and that's my stage description. And now if I preview the whole thing, you can see I've got my add internal components here, add external components here. Look, we've got everything grouped by their components. So that's how you would go about doing that. So we now have a report that works. If we actually go back to 155 here, and I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way, I'm going to do it like this, prompt for new parameter values, and just do 155. You could see that we get this report up top, but this report here is blank. Now we got the lines here and stuff like that. This still presents a problem because I want to see only one of these two here. And what I'm going to do in the next video is show you how to do that by extracting data from a subreport. If you want to know about SQL, Crystal Reports, and more Business One features, I do suggest checking out all my SAP Business One courses in the LinkedIn Learning Library.